everybody, welcome to another episode of Tomorrow's Filmmakers. My name is Justice McCraney, and today we are going to be talking about the basic structure of writing, otherwise known as the hero's journey. So before we start asking our film a bunch of questions and trying to figure out where everything goes, we need to learn about the basic structure of writing, or the basic timeline of a movie, so we can start placing our ideas where they need to go. So let me just go ahead and say that there are countless books on screenwriting, and I mean countless. But almost every single screenwriter will pretty much agree on the hero's journey. And that means that virtually every single movie that you see is basically the same. Almost every single movie has some of the same components and they have the same timeline of film. And if you're still confused about that, let me just show you what I mean. So about every single film that you've ever seen has a three act structure. Act one is the beginning, and that's where all the introduction to the character happens. Act two is going to be the meat of the story, and this is where the adventure takes place. And act three would be the final act of the film, the final battle, and you know, where the hero wins, or where he learns what he needs to learn, etc. You know, three acts. But it gets even deeper than that. The beginning of a movie starts with the introduction of our hero, usually in whatever state he's living in, and shows his normal world, so to speak. In Spider-Man, we learn that he's an absolute nerd and no one likes him, right? In Lion King, we're introduced to Simba. It shows him his normal life, you know, in Facing the Giants. Our main character is introduced. We know he's a football coach and we know that he's not very good. It shows them in their normal life. It shows us what normal is for our main characters. Then we have the inciting incident. And every single movie ever made has an inciting incident. And this is something that happens to our hero that completely throws him off his normal world and sends him on an adventure. In Spider-Man, this is when he gets bitten by a spider. In Lion King, it's when Mufasa dies and Simba has to run away. In Facing the Giants, it's where we learn that he's gonna be fired, right? In Courageous, it's where his daughter is killed. Something happens in the story that basically starts our hero's journey and sends him on the rest of the movie. And on a side note, most inciting incidences happen around 12 minutes into a film. So if you see a film, about 12 minutes into it is whenever the inciting incident will happen. You want out? That's fine with me! <laughs> now usually after that, we have something called the call to an adventure. Someone or something tells our hero to go on an adventure. Obi-Wan Kenobi tells Luke that it's time to learn the ways of the Force and to go on an adventure. In Lord of the Rings, it's Gandalf. He says, go on an adventure. In War Room, it's Clara, the old lady who says, you need to pray more and you need to go on this adventure. There's someone that says, after the inciting incident, go on an adventure. Some movies, the hero decides to go on an adventure by himself, but usually it's someone that tells him to. Then we have the hero's denial. This is whenever the hero usually refuses to go and he plays hard to get. You know, this is in a ton of movies. The hero will usually say, you know, I can't do this or no, I'm not gonna do that. You can't make me do that. And you know, he ends up changing his mind later. In Fireproof, Kirk Cameron does not want to do the love dare. It's a waste of time. He doesn't want to do it. His marriage is in shambles. No, I'm not doing it. Then he decides to do it. I want you to hold off on the divorce for 40 days. Why? I'm gonna send you something in the mail. Something that'll take you that long to do. What is it? It's what saved our marriage. Dad, if this is a religious thing, I'd rather you didn't. So again, staying with the foundation of a movie structure. We have the beginning, we have something that happens to our hero, we have the call to adventure, then we have the hard to get, which he eventually says, okay, fine, I'll do it. And that's when we break into act two. And this is where the adventure begins, whatever adventure it is. In Spider-Man, this is whenever he starts trying to figure out his powers and completely fails miserably. In Star Wars, this is where Luke starts to train with his lightsaber and starts preparing for war or whatever. You know, this is whenever Marlin literally sets out and goes and finds Nemo. This is whenever he just says, I'm gonna go find you, I'm gonna go find you. 
And this is whenever the secondary story comes into play, or the B story. This is whenever we're usually introduced to a new character, most of the time funny. Sometimes it's actually the villain, but most of the time this is when we're introduced to a character that aids our hero in his adventure. In Finding Nemo, this is when Marlin meets Dory. You know, we have her entire backstory, she's able to read, she's able to speak whale, and her story and her abilities aid to Marlin's adventure. In Star Wars, this is where Luke and Obi-Wan meet Han Solo, right? An entirely different backstory, but he aids in the rescuing of Princess Leia and, and the rest of the films. Or this is where Simba meets Timon and Pumbaa. Entirely different stories, entirely different backgrounds, but their abilities aid to our hero's journey. So after these things are going good, we hit the midpoint of the film. And at this point, everything completely falls apart and everything terrible happens. In Toy Story, this is where Buzz and Woody are taken to Sid's house. In Toy Story 3, this is when all the toys are captured and put into crates. In Star Wars, this is where Obi-Wan dies. And in Fireproof, this is where Kirk Cameron has been working so hard on this love dare and he's, he's fighting for his wife only to find that she's already signed the divorce papers. Sometimes our hero actually accomplishes what he set out to do only to realize it didn't do anything for him. In Angels in the Outfield, he's desperately wanting the Angels to win this baseball game because then his dad said that he would come and adopt him. So whenever they are about to win, his dad says, I'm not gonna adopt you, and now it's for nothing, right? So he almost accomplishes what he wants only to realize it didn't do what he thought it was gonna do, which pushes our character into the dark night of the soul. This is where our hero is ready to give up, realizing you know, what has happened and he doesn't care anymore. There's no reason to keep going. He is completely done. Again, in Toy Story, Buzz realizes he's just a toy and he's completely ready to give up. You were right all along. I'm not a space ranger. I'm just a toy, a stupid little insignificant toy. In Lord of the Rings, it's after Gandalf dies and everyone is just kind of done. They don't want to do this anymore. They don't want to continue. This is where our hero seemingly gives up his quest and he's completely done. Then we have the breakthrough. And this is where our character comes back to his senses and gets back in the fight and wants to continue with his journey again. A lot of the time it actually comes from the B story and the B character that we were introduced to before. Dory encourages Marlin to keep going even though he's in despair, you know, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. There, there. It's all right. It'll be okay. No. No, it won't. Sure it will. You'll see. And this is in like every single boxing movie ever made, right? The hero feels good. He's been training. You know, then this dark night of the soul takes place and he doesn't want to go on anymore. But then something happens and his trainer gives him the most motivational speech ever, right? And his wife tells him she loves him and she's so proud of him. And you know, you're a good man or something like that. And then something makes him want to fight more and get out of his depression. And then we have the whole Rocky thing, right? This happens in every single boxing movie ever. Why don't you stand up and fight this guy hard like you've done before? That was beautiful. Don't lay down in front of them like this. But sometimes what pushes our character out of their depression is not necessarily a good thing. Sometimes they just happen to be forced out of it. They have to be forced out of this depression. In The Dark Knight Rises, just watching the TV and seeing how this villain is destroying his city is motivation enough to get out of the state that he's in and Batman has to come back and fight. No, I'm not afraid. I'm angry. <laughs> or a lot of the time their wife is captured or the enemy has taken captive one of their children and now he has to get out of this to go save his children. Which brings us right into act three, the final battle. This is where it all comes together and this is where the, you know, the end happens, where the hero and the villain fight, we have a showdown. Sometimes it's not a physical fight, it might be a mental fight, but whatever it is, this is the climax of the movie. This is what it's all been building to from the very, very beginning. This is act three, this is the final battle. After that, the hero wins or maybe he sacrifices himself to save others. Whatever it is, there is a resolution and now some type of new normal. This shows what life is now like after all this adventure has happened. Many times it actually goes back to where the beginning of the film took place to show how our characters' lives have changed now because of what just took place. 
In Lord of the Rings, we start out in the Shire, showing how the hobbits live, and at the end, we end up in the Shire, showing how the hobbits live now after all of this has taken place. And that is every movie that you've ever seen. Now, there are some exceptions. Some movies don't fit on this timeline, but even movies that are strange and have all these flashbacks and stuff, they have beginnings, they have Dark Knight of the Souls, they have final battles, they have inciting incidences. A lot of movies fit right here on this timeline. So if we take this timeline, and it's basically almost every movie, it fits on our timeline because all movies basically have this timeline. Now, of course, if you have an eight minute short film, it might not fit on all these timelines, but it also kind of does because even though it's only eight minutes long, you usually have a normal, you have an inciting incident, maybe you have a dark night of the soul, you usually have a final battle. It always fits in this timeline somehow. So now that you guys understand the structure of writing and the timeline, now it's really easy to see where our story lines up with it and then to come up with new ideas, which we're gonna be talking about in the next episode. So of course, not every single movie has every single one of these parts, but this is very normal to a movie. Most movies have these acts, you know, act one and act two and act three, all of these things in between, most movies have them. So for your assignment, I want you to go take any movie off the shelf, any Disney movie for sure, any movie off the shelf, take this timeline, which we'll have in the notes below, and go see if it lines up with this. What's their normal world? What's the inciting incident that pushes our character into action? What's the call to adventure? Who says it? Does he realize he says it on his own or does someone tell him to do that? Does he play hard to get or does he just go right into the adventure? What's the dark night of the soul? When does our character realize it's time to give up and it's not worth it anymore? And start placing many movies on this timeline and you'll have a lot of fun doing it. So now that we know the hero's journey, it's time to take our short film and place it on this timeline and come up with some new ideas. Thank you.